cancel your document signing subscription software and instead just use high levels because it can do everything the competitors can do and it can do it inside of your existing sub accounts with legally binding online documents and i'm going to show you how to use everything in this video so first place to go here is payments and then documents and contracts now a few preliminary things to note here documents and contracts used to be called proposals and estimates same thing different name now you might see both of those thrown around in the community now they're called documents and contracts these are very much related to both products and invoices so if you have a product that people are committing to in your document or contract then you need to create that first inside of products and if you want people to actually process their card it's not going to happen inside of the document and contract itself you're going to need to send an invoice afterwards which you can automate very very cool but just so you know those are two separate things here the only way you would be able to process the payment directly from the document and contract is if you put a field in the contract where they put in their credit card number and then you manually type in their credit card number into whatever payment processor you're using that technically does expose you to some level of legal risk actually having access to the real credit card number however i know a lot of people do it that way in addition to all of that documents and contracts are available both in workflows and in the mobile app so inside of workflows there's a trigger and there are actions for documents very very cool you can automate based off of those and then with a mobile app you can actually send templated contracts on the fly which of course is very useful for anyone in the home services industry so if you're in that industry definitely pay attention to that bit in the video where we're going to go over how to use the mobile app okay so the first thing we need to do is come into settings and decide what we want the customer notifications and team notifications to look like so this is super simple you're just deciding what you want the email subject to be and whether you want to use the default email or your own email template the default email looks like this I think it's totally fine it's going to attach your logo from your business profile settings and then by default it will say the name of the sub account and then we'll say the name of the document or contract and then we'll say the word received and you can pause and read the rest of what it says here for the purposes of what I'm doing with this right now for the example of this video I'm sending a rental agreement contract all I need to say is document named received and then document named signed here on the document signed one if you wanted to really customize what this email says you can select any of your email templates here which you set up inside of marketing and then emails and templates so the next thing is team notifications same exact thing here I forgot to mention that you can override the sender details so that it always comes from the same exact name and email even if your team is creating it something you may want to do depending on your business or your clients business and then on the product invoicing this one's very very cool you could automate this inside of workflows but it's just a simple workflow action basically where you can automatically send the invoice after document completion and this is what I said earlier about the products you need to have the products associated with this document and contract for the invoice that is also associated with that product to send after they sign the document so that's it for settings pretty straightforward next thing to do is come here to templates pretty much everything you want to create will be templated you shouldn't be creating a bunch of random stuff in the normal documents and contracts because you're going to want to use things as templates down the line so come into templates just hit new and then you have the option to create this yourself with the actual builder or you can upload a pdf kind of like a hybrid approach here and i'll show you why but for purposes of this video we'll open up this new template here and now we get to play around with this so the first thing that everyone should know is you hit this add an element button and you just drag these blocks over and then you can decide you know whether you want a background color which doesn't make a ton of sense for this text block but it could make sense for example like this image let's say I select my logo in the image URL field right here hit my logo there it looks okay I want it to be a little bit smaller so do like 50 on the height and 200 on the width there and then I can take the background color and throw like a black on there that looks kind of cool and then of course I can change this to black and white if I want I can align it left center right whatever you want you can play with it here add some margin down here whatever you want you can play with it so then if I had actual like language that I wanted to paste in here specifically, I could do that and it would just populate everything. And the really cool thing is you can also use custom fields here. So if I hit custom values, account, let's say name, then it, you can see it defaults to Keaton Walker LLC, which is the name of this sub account. So you could type up the language directly in here or type it up in another app and then go in there and update the custom values for the purposes of that template specifically. In my case, I already have a PDF I want to upload and I want to show you that feature anyway. So we're going to do that. So just pretend this has a bunch of legalese in it it looks awesome at the very end of that what we do is throw in either this table if that's something you want to do like here's what's included here and then we put in the price you know whatever over there
there. And this would be more if you don't want to connect it to a real product inside of high level. But if you do, what looks better, I believe, is this product list. And this is pretty slick because I can go in here and add an item. I just select a, a product, let's say like my Facebook ads course, for example, link below in the description. I select a price, it's hundred dollars. I hit add item. What I can do is decide if this is optional. So if I had multiple items in here, I could help them select. And that's obviously very helpful for a template. If I'm on the fly, I can just send that and then they can select which one they want. Or if I'm making this custom for somebody and they're still not sure, I can just send both options and they can pick after the fact. So I can toggle on that optional, which allows me to toggle this on here, but then I can also edit quantity. So if it's something where they need multiple of this course wouldn't really make sense, but for some sort of physical product, they could come in here and put in five and then it would automatically update the subtotal there, which is very cool. I can decide whether I want to add a percentage or a custom amount discount to this particular template or a custom contract. And then here in this invoice type and setting here, we decide whether it's one time or recurring. And if it's recurring, we can set the frequency settings here and it's just going to automatically create that based on all of the settings that we put inside of our invoices. So make sure you come into your invoice settings, look at all of this and make sure that you're good with what's going to be sent. And then just to show you, if we were to finish this example we're doing right now, uh, what I would do is signature here and that's going to default and put the contacts name right there. And then I could do another signature and assign that to myself here. And then I would save or use template. And then that's going to push me into the real template side of things. Let's say. And then I would go ahead and hit send. I'll show you what that screen looks like in just a minute and how to use these other fillable fields here with the real example that I'm going to show you. So to upload a PDF, you just hit new, upload a PDF, drag it there. Once it's uploaded, it will populate here and it will automatically pull up. And here we go. This, this is the rental contract with everything written out. I don't have to try to configure this inside with all of those blocks. This is much easier for me in this case. So what I'm going to do here is there's a lot of stuff that needs to be filled in here still. There's a lot of blank rows, as you can see. And there's a couple ways I could do this. So I could come here to text and drag this. And as you can see, it just kind of goes over that. So I can try to, you know, drag it over to where I want it or to add in like some margin here and at the top and, you know, try to get it down to where I want it to be. But obviously that's not going to work super well. So instead, what I'm going to do is just add text fields here. So I just put this here and then either I can fill this in or I can decide who it's assigned to. So if the signer needs to fill some information in, I can assign that. But a prerequisite to that is we need to come in and actually select the recipients. So you just come in here, you can type in the name of the person, select them. And by the way, if they're not already a contact in the system, there's no way to add them here. So you need to go back to contacts and add them if they're not already. However, if you want to add additional recipients, you can a little bit of just a quirk in the system there, but just be aware there's no way to add a new client from this screen if there's not already a primary client. So in my case, I actually have two tenants that are signing the lease together. So I'm going to add the other one from here using this one. Okay. So the second person has been added in. And even though it just says they're getting CC'd on this right now, they actually will be turned into a signer once I assign something to them. So let's go back here to this element side of things. And you can see that this one is assigned to our first person, which is indicated by this pink box, but I need both of them to fill out their name. So I'm going to do another text field on this same page, and I'm going to switch that to the second one. And you can see that turns blue. And as I hover over it, the name shows. So we've got person number one, person number two. And now if we go back to here, you'll see that this little icon here has changed to signer instead of just being a CC. And as I'm doing this, I realize I was not right. This placeholder is just going to be a placeholder. You're actually not going to be able to fill this from here yourself unless I assign myself to be the signer, then I could do that. But there's no good way to actually put the text directly on here. So I'd recommend doing that in another app. And that's exactly what the rest of these are going to be. There are things that I myself need to fill out. So what I'm going to do here is just come and put in the text field and then assign it to me. And then you'll see that this recipients pops up and all of a sudden I'm a signer. So I want this to be sent to them with all of this information pre-populated. So what I'm going to do now is hit set signing order. I'm going to drag myself to the top. And that means that I'll get an email. I have to finish everything and then the email will send to the next person. And when that person finishes, it will send to the next person. So I'm just going to go ahead and fill all of these with little blue boxes so that I can fill all of those in when it gets sent to me. All right, awesome. So I filled all of those in some I don't need to. So I'm just going to leave them blank. And now I'm going to scroll through the rest of the contract and find additional spots that need to be filled in. Okay, so I've filled out this email and phone part for them. And the last thing to do is just have everybody sign. So I'm going to put in a signature box here and shrink that way down and go ahead and sign that to the first person. I'll hit copy and then assign this one to the second 
second one and copy one more time and assign this one to myself. Then we need to do a date, which we can just pop in here, select date. Again, copy, assign, and copy, assign. On the date format here, I'm gonna switch this to be month, day, year. And then of course you can customize this to be any date, past date, future date, today's date. And with that, we've used most of these fillable fields. The other ones are initials and checkbox. But with this text field, you can literally just put anything in there. So that works really well. All right, I think this is looking really good. One last thing I forgot to mention before we exit this section of the builder is this document variables thing. This is basically just custom values, except specifically for documents and contracts. So if you wanted to create your own variable where it's like, I could do project, name, for example, and then the variable value for the particular contract, I could just go in there and swap it quite easily because it's in this UI here. So let's say this is like landscape uh, project, just as an example, I hit save, I can copy this one over. And then if I've got a text field, like here at the bottom, I can just paste it and you see that's in there, but I could also come back in here and just change that. And that will update what this looks like here. So pretty nifty and useful there. All right. Now with our final contract set up here, I'm going to hit preview. And this shows me what the document looks like with everyone. And it gives me a really nice link here that I can just send manually if that's something I want to do. So I can take a look at all of this, just make sure it looks good one last time. I think it does. Let's check our signing order. Okay, this is going to go to me first. So even if I did make a mistake, I will catch it as I'm going through. And then the last thing I'm going to do is go ahead and rename this. So I've just named it the address of the property and then the dates that this will be executed. Definitely going to hit save there. Don't want to lose any of that. And then the next thing I'm going to do is hit send and I'll hit send via email. I can also just copy that link from the preview. But when I hit send via email, it's going to say send successfully. We'll come back here and you'll see that this one is in the waiting for others category. So now what I need to do is check my email and okay, I got this. I'm going to hit view. And it's going to walk me through signing every single part of this that's assigned to me. All right. So I just got this. It's looking good. I've got this um, start filling out button that I can just click. And this handy little thing tells me where to fill in. So I'm just going to take some time to fill everything in and I'll update you when I'm done. Alrighty, that's everything. So I'm going to hit sign here, hit accept and sign, and then select the date. Perfect. Everything looks great. And now this green finish sign has showed up. So I'll go ahead and hit finish. And then it says we will sign a signed copy for reference when the document has been accepted by all parties. So then the last thing left to do is just make sure that this sent to the next recipient. So I'll come into my conversations dashboard and high level. And if I hit all, you can see this just barely sent to that first one. Send a document. They can click below to view it. And this is going to have all of my stuff that I already filled in on it. And this person is going to go through and sign and, and fill out all of their information. And to close out, let's show you how to use this on the mobile app. So just open the lead connector app. If you have the high level app that works as well, you can hit this menu up in the corner. And then on the bottom, you just hit documents and contracts. And as you can see, we have two things here. We have all documents and then we have templates on the all documents side. We're just going to be able to see the ones that we've already sent and we can sort by status or by the date that they were sent. And if we click on these three dots, we can also view view clone, download a PDF, convert to a template, share via link, mark as complete or move to draft. But we're not going to be able to like create from scratch a brand new document or contract in here. And that's why creating them on desktop first will help you when you're on the go or your clients are on the go using this. So to use it, you're just going to hit plus. It'll ask you which template you want to use. You hit next. You name the document here, and then you select the customer that you're going to assign it to. One thing to know is that this is different from the desktop app in that I can just create a brand new contact if I don't already have them in there as the primary receiver. But let's go ahead and select my other email. And then once I'm out of there, I'll have the option to add more recipients. And then what's really cool here on the update document side is I can just create a note for what the item is. So like custom plumbing pipes or whatever it is, right? And then I can assign on the fly if it's something I don't normally do as a plumber, let's say $250, the note is in there and that's going to add it in there. Alternatively, I can hit catalog and I can select from all of the products that I already have previously saved. And if I have that thing turned on where the invoice automatically sends, either of those invoices will send afterwards, which is great. Then it's going to have me review this. You can see that in the template, I had the times five there, and then I added the custom item for the 250 there. So the total amount comes here. I can add a discount after the fact with this percentage slider, which is great. And then I can hit send. Then it's going to give me this final screen where I can see, okay, download the PDF, or I can hit share and just grab the link. So copying the link for myself or for the person that I want to send it to, and then I can send it in whatever platform, or I can just hit email 
and bada boom, bada bing, I have received it. I can hit view and I can sign straight from my phone as well from sendlink.co, hit start filling out, hit the signature, I can select the script that I want to sign in or I can draw it and then hit accept and sign, finish, and that will send it to the next person so that they can do it. And folks, that is it. That's how to use documents and contracts inside of high level. If you'd like to work with me directly, there's a link below to join my affiliate community where you can join with any one of 20 plus softwares. It doesn't have to be high level, but you can also upgrade your high level subscription if you're planning on doing that anyway through my link and you can join. We do monthly calls, lots of other bonuses, courses, guest speakers, etc. Would love to see you inside and thanks for watching.